Good morning, everyone. I'm Sonia Vognot, and uh, today we're going to be talking about the uh, current DOE uh, funding uh, opportunity announcement for advancing the U.S. thin film solar photovoltaics, or PV, and we're going to be talking about the FOA in general and also how to apply and focusing on the um, concept papers. So a little bit about myself. I have a company called Opspot. Uh, it's a woman-owned small business, and we've been around since about 200, 2004, and we offer consulting services for the small businesses, specifically uh, assisting with non-diluted funding opportunities. So the agenda for today, uh, again, we're going to be focusing on an overview of the current DOE fund funding opportunity. Uh, we'll describe a little bit and touch base on, on what the topics look like. There's two in general um, information and then how to prepare the concept paper because the concept paper is a requirement and is one of the uh, first phases that you're going to have to do to apply for this. And then uh, uh, for the future, if you need me, there'll be information on how to reach me for questions. So the application process is two steps. The first one, you're going to have to write a concept paper, and that one's coming up in a couple of weeks. It's due on October 24th, and then there's the full application that's on December 12th. Uh, keep in mind that after 5 p.m. Eastern time, they will not accept your applications, so I suggest you submit a couple of days early if possible. And then there's going to be an initial eligibility review, and that's done against your concept paper. And the applications have to be submitted through the EER exchange. There's a link there. And you have to have a unique entity identifier, or UEI, which you get when you have successfully registered through the System of Award Management, or SAM, at SAM.gov. And during the application, you will be given a control number. This is through the EERE, and you keep that in mind because you're going to need it throughout your application. It has to be included in the documents as well as in your naming conventions. So a little bit of uh, key information and overview about this uh, funding opportunity. The agency is the Department of Energy specifically the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, or EERE, -E, and the Solar Energy Technologies Office, or CEDO, which provides research and development for perovskite photovoltaics and cadmium telluride, or CDTV, uh, photovoltaic technologies. So they're looking for industrial R&D projects for perovskite PV, as well as industrial R&D and demonstration projects for cadmium telluride uh, PV. And the goal is to improve the commercial viability um, and expand on the market share for these technologies that are gonna be studied. So keep in mind, the eligible applicants have to be for-profit entities. So the, the, the actual applicant or the prime recipient is a for-profit entity. Uh, and uh, DOE is encouraging for these applicants to form teams. And on, on the next slide, you're going to see uh, a little bit about the teams, but they're going to have a teaming partner list, and it's going to be available on the ERE exchange site. And also, all the work has to be and must be performed in the United States. And only new applicants will be considered for this FOA, and it's going to be of a cooperative agreement type. So background. The purpose is to support the expected uh, increase in demand of photovoltaic technology, specifically with uh, regards to thin film photovoltaics. And how do we stay competitive? How do we scale? How do we bank and make money on this? It's got to be durable. It's got to perform. And it's got to uh, compete against the current technology of the crystalline silicon, or C-SI uh, PV. So the fall focuses on two types of thin film 
photovoltaic technologies. The first one is the metal halide perovskite photovoltaic. And the second one is your cadmium telluride photovoltaic. And the assumption is that they're going to have advantages. These two technologies will consume less energy in intensive manufacturing. It will lower the manufacturing uh, capital expenditures. It'll have simpler, easier supply chains, and there's going to be an increase in the lifetime of your energy yield. So considering those advantages, that's why the DOE wants to fund uh, the utilization of these two thin uh, film uh, PV technologies. However, there's going to be challenges, and uh, that's another reason. How do we overcome these challenges of bringing these technologies to market? So again, the goal, we're going to prove scalability, durability, cost competitive, and we're gonna be reducing the financial risk. Okay, teaming partner list. As I mentioned before, DOE is gonna provide a teaming partner list through the EERE exchange site. So applicants are very strongly encouraged to form teams. Who can you partner with? You can partner with academia, national laboratories, other industry members, supply chain partners, equipment developer, developers, or uh, you know, uh, universities or research institutions with diverse individuals, such as historically black colleges and universities or minority serving institutions. So keep this in mind. Uh, if you need to partner, make sure you look at these teaming partner opportunities in this list. And uh, again, DOE will compile them and they're gonna be available on the ER exchange. And so please find out uh, if you wanna be on that list and look for partners. So there's two topics. One is topic one we'll call primes and it's about promoting research and development for industrial manufacturing of early stage perovskite tandem PV primes. And there's going to be up to $20 million in funding. And we're looking at how, um, you know, at R&D projects for for-profit companies. And the goal is to see if you could reach the specific efficiency, long-term durability, manufacturability, and the economic viability uh, thresholds. And these are pilot projects that will enable scalability of manufacturing. The second topic is about improving the market potential of cadmium, cadmium telluride, or called impact PV. That one's up to 16 million. And this one is both research and development and demonstration. So there's two Ds for the projects in the cadmium telluride. Uh, for materials, equipment, installation, recycling, maybe proving performance monitoring sectors. But there's three focus areas. How do we adapt the growing number of these cadmium telluride modules? How do we increase the cadmium telluride uh, PV supply chain? And how do we improve the technology? Okay, so this table um, also you're gonna find all this information in the FOA. I'm just compiled the summary of the most uh, important information. So this table here summarized the estimated funding for each of the topics and how many anticipated awards. So we mentioned that topic one is up to 20 million. They're anticipating one to five uh, with a typical award of 3 million and duration 18 months, 36. So anywhere from a year and a half to three years. For the second topic, for the cadmium telluride, one to 10 uh, awards, a lot less money per award, and up to you know the uh, 16 million. And that one's gonna be uh, between one to three years in duration. So a little bit more specific on topic one or the primes, um, perovskite tandem PV. So this one, the goal is to have domestically manufactured perovskite 
hybrid tandem DV so that it can successfully be commercialized and reach the market acceptance in 2030. The projects will have to focus on this hybrid tandem devices that combine the perovskite PV with other PV materials, such as the crystalline silicon or cadmium TV, for example. And then uh, you've got to overcome the challenges of using perovskite PV, right? The durability challenge, the scalability challenge, and its efficiency, manufacturing, and validating that it works and that it can be bankable. Okay, so that's kind of what that triangle there is uh, is uh, there to remind you that you've got to meet these challenges, and you've got to be focusing on research and development needed to fully exploit the potential of the perovskite PV. And how do you accelerate that progress towards the manufacturing efforts and have it commercially available and acceptable by 2030? So the topic uh, hybrid tandem technologies comprised uh, of the halide perovskite uh, for semi-transparent top module, non-perovskite bottom PVs and modules. And uh, they're not interested in projects for single junction devices and they're looking at equipment readiness, uh, that's a requirement. So, and you've got to follow for this topic, the competitive competitive baseline project guidelines, and they're all outlined on the FOA. So, and what's also specific about this topic is that there's a data sharing requirement, and you'll find that at uh, table two on page 17. A little bit more on the uh, topic one or primes, You've got to look at this table one, and these are requirements for each of the different types of projects and uh, the, the uh, performance requirements and what they're looking at in terms of reaching for durability, for example, and uh, a couple of other requirements for this topic and the pair of sky. So keep in mind that you've got to follow uh, on the FOA, the instructions, and look at this table for requirements of what they're looking for. Uh, topic two is different. Topic two is the impact and it's about cadmium telluride. And again, we're looking at how do we bring the cadmium telluride uh, industry and transition it for energy re um, renewable energy purposes. There's three main areas of interest. So we're going to be supporting the ability to adapt the growing number of the cadmium telluride modules. Uh, we've got to look at how to increase the scalability of domestic cadmium telluride into the supply chain. And how do we improve the technology as well and maintain its competitiveness against the crystalline silicon? All right. Uh, and then these are the challenges when you're dealing with cadmium telluride for manufacturing. There's limited uh, telluride uh, availability. How do you handle the modules to, uh, for end of life? And how do you compete against the current use of the crystalline silicon? And, um, and the cost of non-cadmium telluride module components? And how do you manage the scalability uh, for large scale deployment into fleet monitoring. So these are the challenges and in your proposal, you've got to be able to address how you're going to overcome it, right? Uh, CETO projects uh, seeks for projects that can lead for improvements in performance, cost reduction, and or energy intensity reduction. And they're look, encouraging projects that will increase that telluride supply because that's one of the challenges. It's limited. So how do we increase that supply? And uh, keep in mind, research and development focused projects should address one or more of the goals outlined in the FOA. And these are demonstration projects. It, they must have access to the facilities and you must include the activities that are outlined also in the fall on page 24. Another thing that is now quite common and it is a requirement under this FOA is to include a community benefits plan. And these are the objectives. Uh, there's specifically three 
and on your community benefit plan, you will have to and you must address these three objectives. The, how, how are you going to advance and uh, address diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, or DEIA? How is your technology and your approach going to contribute to energy equity? And how are you going to be investing in America's workforce? Again, these are three required objectives to me. You're also going to have to do cost sharing, right? So for topic one, there is a 20% cost share. And the, this cost share cannot come from non-federal funding sources unless it's allowed by the law. So if there is something that allows for it to be done through the law, you could do it, but most likely not. So topic two, the impact cadmium telluride, that one will require 20% cost share for the R&D activities, but a 50% for demonstration and commercial application projects. Okay, eligibility information. So this FOA, and applicants have to be for-profit and have to be domestic U.S. companies. And the uh, sub-recipients can be, uh, or your um, sub-awardees, subcontractors can be institution of higher education, like research institutions, other for-profit entities, other non-profit entities, or local and state government entities, such as tribal nations, for example. If you need to work and you need an exception to work with a foreign entity on very limited occasions, these could be approved, but you will have to submit an application for waiver in your full application. Um, you could also uh, work with incorporated consortia or unincorporated consortia. And all the instructions, again, and these requirements with full details are found on the full app. Compliance criteria, uh, you must comply with all the applicable content and form requirements. And these have to all be included on the requirement. Um, you have to include all the required documents. They have to be uploaded into the EERE exchange uh, platform. You have to submit by the deadline. And DOE, as well as myself, encourage you to apply two days or, or sooner before the deadline, because you never know if there's going to be uh, random things that occur or the systems are overloaded and you can't submit or your computer crashes. Uh, remember Murphy's Law? So please apply early so that you're not all stressing about it. And when we're rushing through things, that's when we tend to do mistakes. So another thing, you can submit more than one concept paper and full applications, but just make sure that they're completely distinct uh, uh, applications and, and concept papers. So the application and submission uh, process or information, all the files have to be written in English and PDF files. They must fit on an eight by five by 11 page, no legal papers, no smaller papers, uh, one inch margins, Calibri typeface 12 point. Make sure you include the control number. Um, the FOET tells you where to place it. The file names are control number, your company name or your applicant name. And uh, for instance, if it's the concept paper, you put concept paper. If it's full application, you put full application. Since files can't exceed 50, million, 50 megabytes in size, if you have uh, your full application requires more because it has pictures or some things that are really big, then you break up the full application to volume one, volume two, whatever, uh, so that you can have them following the naming conventions. Page numbers on the footers. Don't exceed mass, max uh, page numbers. Any questions, uh, there's your email address. And keep in mind that for educational purposes and service and additional help, uh, you've got the UACI um, where I'm collaborating with, as well as ADL Ventures and the Entrepreneur for Futures Network. Okay, so let's get into what the content of the concept paper is. 
So in the con concept paper, you're going to have the first page is the cover page. You can have up to four pages for technology description. You must include your benefits plan that addresses those three objectives in one page. And you can have an addendum of two pages to brag about your team, your experience, and other capabilities. Keep in mind, for topic one, you will also require data sharing. And we'll talk about it uh, um, in a minute here. Let's go into details for each of these. <clears throat> the cover page needs the following information, a project title, a topic area, the technical and business point of contacts, all your team member organizations, where you're going to be uh, conducting your research and development or demonstration, <clears throat> excuse me, and if there is any confidentiality statements, they go on the first page. Again, uh, topic one has additional requirements, and these are all in the FOA, and sometimes they're lengthy, so I'm not gonna be reading them. But for topic one, for instance, and your cover page, if you're applying for 7 million or more, you have to provide a high le and low funding level described on the concept paper. And there's the section number. For the technology description, you have up to, up to four pages. So you will discuss your proposed technology, the target level, of performance and how you're going to meet it, what's the current state of the art, and explain what are the shortcomings and the limitations and challenges of the current state of the art, and explain how you're going to overcome those shortcomings, limitations, and challenges with your technology, and what's going to be the potential impact, where you're going to conduct your, your R&D, and why? Why do you have to conduct it there? And how is it going to support the um, the the feasibility and and uh, the success of the project? Address all technical risks or any issue. And then, how is the ERE funding going to impact? Uh, what impact does it have? Again, topic one has the requirements of the federal funds limits, and the details are in the form. For the concept paper, <clears throat> uh, you also need your community benefits plan in one page, and you must address the objectives of the DEIA, how you're going to contribute to energy equity, and how you're going to invest in the uh, workforce. You find more details on section uh, five, as well as the appendix to give uh, examples. I'm just going to list here. Uh, I'm not going to read them all, but these are also all found on the FOA <clears throat> on Appendix uh, F. But these are examples, for example, of how you could meet the DEIA uh, requirements. How do you collaborate uh, with minority uh, serving institutions, for instance, uh, and how you're going to overcome uh, climate surveys, re removing inequalities, uh, Anti-bias training, uh, offering training mentorship to disadvantaged communities. Um, and then maybe uh, distributing materials to reduce the stigma towards individuals with disabilities. Again, these are just examples. The FOA has a whole much more for uh, this particular objectives. The other objective for energy equity, uh, I list again, just... Uh, a few items. Um, so for instance, um, let's look at the third bullet, describing how the proposed research strategy and methodology was informed uh, by input from a wide variety of stakeholders, right? And um, are you involving diverse geographic and demographic communities uh, for economic development purposes? That's the first bullet. And then finally, the third objective for workforce development. Um, so bullet three, creating a plan and milestones for assessing how successful innovation will have implications on job savings or loss uh, at the micro macroeconomic or 
as specific industries. Um, how is your project going to support workforce training to address a successful uh, innovation? And are you recognizing a union or informing employees of their rights? And then the final component, uh, except for topic one where you need to do data sharing too, is an addendum uh, with two pages maximum. And here's where you get to brag about your qualifications and experience and capabilities of your team. So do you have the skills and expertise to execute uh, the project? Uh, do you have prior experience? Who are you teaming with? Where are you gonna do the work and what uh, equipment and facilities are you having or do you need? And where are you gonna do it and how are you gonna use it? And any chart or graphs that will supplement uh, and explain your technology uh, could go in here too. And again, there's uh, more specifics about the requirements for topic one in the addendum. Okay, so for topic one only, there's data sharing. And the applicants of topic one are required to provide preliminary data that they expect will include in the future full application that meets or shows progress towards meeting the competitive baseline project guidelines for the funding sought. And then uh, they give you a table of a suggested way to illustrate and report this data. So make sure you follow the guidelines for the data sharing for topic one. How is your concept paper gonna be reviewed? So for review criteria, uh, most uh, purpose, the, the real purpose of this is to determine eligibility and applicability for one or the topics, right? So are you clearly describing the technology? How is it unique and innovative? And how is it gonna advance the current state of the art? You must identify risk and challenges and include, for example, are there regulatory financial aspects? How are you gonna mitigate them? And then how are you gonna show the impact that the ERE funding is gonna have on your relevant field? And do you have the qualifications, experience, and capabilities to successfully accomplish what you say you're going to do? And uh, if you're successful, clearly, you know, it has to uh, show that you're clearly going to be able to, to demonstrate your objectives and the ones on the FOA. And uh, for topic one, there's also additional uh, review criteria. One has to do with the performance targets matrix. And I showed that in an earlier slide, that table one, how are you going to meet those objectives and their target performance? And also, uh, is there sufficient data provided to show that you're going to be meeting the the, capability, the competitive baseline project guidelines? And that has to do with the, the data sharing. Uh, if your concept paper is ineligible, you're going to get an email uh, from the contracting officer. And so be on the lookout for that. It's probably going to come before the full application. So just don't wait till the very end and then know that you're eligible and leave yourself two days to do the full application. If you truly believe you have an eligible concept paper, start working on your full application early. Uh, as far as planning for your submission, make sure you've got a solid, strong team and you identify all the team members, uh, create a proposal plan and a, a massive proposal outline. What, when, who, and by when, right? Uh, and create that schedule and make sure you include on that schedule the concept paper. It's not like you're going to put the concept paper or you shouldn't in a couple of hours. Make sure you schedule time to do that ahead of time. And you know that at this point, you have basically two weeks to create a concept paper. Uh, make sure that you have uh, weekly proposal team review meetings and uh, have a, a red team review meeting or an interim proposal 
uh, reviews. And the final review, I suggest you do it with unbiased people who haven't been working on the proposal, see if they can spend some time reviewing it for you. And summary, start earlier, make sure Make sure you have all the registrations in place. SAM.gov is one that always gets overlooked. Uh, you're not gonna be able to submit your concept paper in two weeks if you don't have a active SAM registration with a UEI. So if you haven't registered now, it's highly unlikely you're gonna get SAM.gov registration active by the 24th. Not impossible, but highly unlikely. Uh, read the solicitation and follow instructions carefully. And when in doubt, or if you have questions, please reach out. And here's some in contact information for me. Thank you very much. <laughs>